this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak to you about general average. What is general average? Master must understand what is general average situation. And master should immediately inform the company and advise them to inform the stakeholders or inform the insurance and PNI club people about the general average because general average is a situation where involvement of all the insurance uh, entities is important. You need to give them notice of general average. So for that master must understand that this is a general average situation. Your Antwerp rules, they talk about general average. In fact, they are the rules in respect of general average. Your Antwerp rules say that there is a general average act when and only when there is an extraordinary expenditure or sacrifice intentionally and reasonably made. It is very important that the expenditure or sacrifice that you are doing must be intentional. You are intending to do it and it should be just enough. It should not be excessive, right? So it says that it should be reasonably made. Where you need to spend $500, you should not be spending $5,000. It has to be reasonably made. So there are two important clutches which uh, 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 control the general average acts uh, reasonable and intentional right this is done for common safety to preserve the property from peril so we need to remember it in this sequence this is for the common safety to preserve the property from the peril if you look at the york antwerp rule there are lettered rules as well as numbered rules and then there is this rule paramount which says that uh, no expenditure or sacrifice will be allowed unless it is reasonably made. It has to be reasonable. This is a very important factor. That means you will not be allowed uh, an expenditure which is more than what is required. Everywhere in the York and Twerp rule we will uh, see the glimpses of this particular rule paramount. It says that except as provided by rule paramount or the numbered rule that various cases of general average will be dealt by in the lettered rules. It means that if rule paramount comes into play, if rule paramount is relevant, then rule paramount has to apply. And it also says that if you have a particular a numbered rule relevant to a particular situation, it will apply. Otherwise, if you don't have a specific numbered rule, the general average will be decided by the letter rules. Subsequent to the general average act, there might be a lot of other activities which are undertaken. But then there has to be a direct consequence with the general average act. Then only those activities, those damages, loss or expenditures will be allowed in general average. Like for example, thus for example, if a general average uh, sacrifice is done and in the bargain, Say there is a loss or damage to the ship. Some part of the ship structure or say foxhole is cut off, right? For uh, uh, the general average act as sacrifice. Then whatever loss that is happening to the ship and subsequently the repairs which will have to be done, all that will be allowed as general average. Another example which they give is when you open a hatch for jettisoning the cargo and uh, while jettisoning the cargo if there is any damage to the cargo to the ship or when the water comes in the hatches down the hatches right then uh, whatever subsequent loss has taken place because of this act will also be allowed as general average in the general average act however there are some exceptions those things might be connected to the general average act but they are not allowed as general average for example if you talk about the damage to the environment there are certain uh, actions which are taken in respect of environment which are allowed as general average and there are some which are not. For example, if you look at article 13 of Salvage Convention, right? So, uh, uh, paragraph B, subparagraph B, it talks about efforts which are taken by the salver in respect of reducing the damage to the environment. Now, this is one of the very important factors that is taken into consideration in deciding the reward of Article 13. But at the same time, the special compensation, which is also an effort taken by the salver in respect of, you know, uh, preserving the environment, you know, uh, that special compensation, because it is 
solely on the owner's account, exclusively on the owner's PNI club's account, it is not taken in general average expenditure. Similarly, the damage which is caused or loss of market that is caused because of the delay which is caused here will not be accounted in general average. So these are the two exceptions like damage to the environment and damage and loss of market not allowed in general average. When the ship enters a port of refuse or a port of loading after the damage has taken place then these expenses are involved in general average not only for entering for exit also the expenses which are incurred are allowed in general average and in this period the masters or crew's wages overtime etc is also allowed as general average so much so that if repairs cannot be done fully in this port of refuse when the ship goes to another port of refuse so port dues uh, expenses the salaries everything is allowed as general average any handling or discharging of cargo or reloading of the cargo that is connected with common safety right will be allowed as general average anything uh, or any damage that has happened to the ship because of sacrifice or because of uh, any general average act you know will be also allowed as general average but if you discover a damage that cannot be associated with this particular general average act or the accident which relates to this general average act will not be allowed as general average that means uh, uh, while you are you know restowing the cargo you find a damage at say number two port which cannot be connected with this particular accident you know it is some uh, old accident which has happened in past right so that accident repair to that accident will not be allowed as general average suppose there is cargo for five or six european ports or generally around the europe and uh, you go to port of refuse uh, you go to lisbon as port of refuse and then one of the consigners he wants to send the cargo by road it is possible but then rights and liabilities in respect of general average will uh, uh, still be maintained as if the cargo is there on the ship till the general average uh, ends or there is completion of common maritime adventure right for this the expenses in respect of say road transport will consider the most reasonable expenses as if uh, as if the consigner is uh, transferring the cargo at his own cost in a general average situation, you might be using the ship's material as fuel. You might be using an alternate uh, uh, fuel or a cargo which is not meant to be used as fuel, as fuel. And it might be expensive, right? So, if you have used the store or material to burn it as a cargo, you will get paid only for the amount of fuel which would otherwise be required. Right? you will not be paid the entire cost remember the word reasonable reasonable means however reasonable means what is the amount that is actually uh, required what is the basic cost involved that will be uh, considered so uh, uh, you don't get for the amount that you have spent here you will get only the reasonable amount reasonable amount means that amount of fuel which will be used otherwise let's take a case of a twin decker ship suppose there is a fire in the lower hold and you're fighting the fire now there is this rule in york antwerp which says that the cargo that is damaged because of a fire and probably water when you're fighting the fire is allowed as general average but in the adjacent compartment or in the twin deck if the cargo is damaged because of the smoke or heat will not be allowed as general average talking about the connectivity or you know a direct consequence of general average act right slight controversial uh, regulation that that if the cargo is damaged by fire it is allowed cargo damaged by heat and smoke is not allowed now talking about the jettisoning of the cargo as per the york and York rules uh, it is stated that if you uh, jettison a cargo which is carried as per uh, prevalent customs or a uh, trade you know traditionally uh, uh, legally what is carried is allowed as general average that means if you uh, have not carried a, a cargo that is not required to be carried not um, allowed to be carried a cargo which is carried on deck whereas it should be carried under deck or a cargo that is loaded but it is described wrongly in respect of stowage of the cargo general average is not allowed to such cargos 
In a particular situation, if it is required that 500 tons of oil should be discharged for the common safety. And if you discharge the oil, will the oil be allowed? Will the cost of oil be and the clean ship cost be allowed in general average? So in my opinion, as per your Cantor approval, the cost and only the cost of cargo will be allowed in general average. But subsequent losses will not be considered as a cost in direct consequence. Right? You understand? This is the second uh, controversial uh, uh, mm, uh, thing that comes into play here. Like uh, if there are claims by fisheries, claims by the recreational organizations which are on the coast, the cleaning cost as well as the claims will not be covered under general average. They will be covered probably under CLC. Then in York Antwerp rules, it also says that the event which gave rise to the sacrifice or expenditure in general average situation originally was caused as a result of mistake of one of the parties to the common maritime adventure. Say typically the master's mistake in navigation or management of the ship. Then still the general average act will apply. Which means that if a master you know, uh, with a loaded ship, he comes at a speed greater than what is uh, appropriate. <clears throat> and then he feels that he won't be able to stop the vessel in the anchorage area and uh, he drops the anchor, but still he uh, lands ashore and causes damage to the shoreline, etc. And subsequently also the ship is damaged. And thereafter he calls general average. The general average will be uh, applied in this particular situation, even though the original act was a mistake on the part of master. So two things which uh, may be remembered in this case, number one, a right to contribution to general average is not affected. And number two, right to the remedies or limitation of liabilities which might be applicable in this case will not be affected also. The onus of proof lies on the party which is claiming the benefit in general average. So it is the responsibilities of all the parties as soon as possible to supply the particulars to the general average adjuster. Typically it is said that within 12 months the particular should be supplied to the GAA general average adjusters, adjuster or otherwise he will have discretion to take into account your contribution or your share or uh, the the cost of cargo as per the invoice or whatever data he has got available at that time. So he'll use his discretion to allow that much cost. The various kind of sacrifices which are possible under your Antwerp rule could involve jettisoning of the cargo, voluntary stranding of the vessel and trying to refloat the vessel when the vessel is stranded and thereby causing the loss to or damage to boiler, machinery, etc. Cutting away part of the ship, you know, uh, and throwing it in water. All these are considered as uh, sacrifice in York Antwerp rule. The expenditure in York Antwerp rule would involve, say for example, uh, salvage or towage expenditure, the expenditures of port of refuse, the salary of people in the port of refuse, and, and the expenses involved in lightening of the vessel or reloading of the vessel. These are all uh, expenses. There is a very fine point we must understand here. The, the factor that is voluntary. Voluntary means it should not be automatic. It should be voluntarily done. So sacrifice or expenditure should be voluntarily done. But here the rule also says that to preserve the property when a vessel is intended to be taken ashore, right? intended to be grounded, whether it is taken intentionally or subsequently as a natural action, the vessel is driven ashore. It will be accounted as general average. Under your Antwerp rule 2004, the expenditure done by the parties in the form of salvage, whether under contract or otherwise, will be allowed as general average. In your Antwerp rule 2016, there is a slight change. It seems if the parties to the contract, the parties to the common maritime adventure, you know, if they have different stakes in salvage compared to general average, that means they have varying responsibilities. The parties to the general average, parties to the general average have a, a different uh, responsibility or liability proportion as far as the salvage is concerned. 
then reapportionment of liability the calculations in respect of reapportionment of liabilities will be done by the general average adjuster if uh, because of readjustment or reapportionment there will be a significant change in the proportion of liability between the parties if the general average adjuster feels that after reapportionment of liabilities there is not going to be a significant change in the proportion of liability by the stakeholders he will not under his discretion allow for the uh, expenditures or the cost that is involved under the salvage under both the rules that is york and rock rule 2004 as well as 16 it is required that the parties to the general average uh, must inform the general average adjuster in respect of the particulars in respect of their share and whatever estimates which are given by a general average adjuster are uh, liable to be challenged they can be challenged by the parties but your country of rule 2016 becomes more specific about it it says that uh, of course these particulars have to be supplied within 12 months and it also says that uh, the estimates which are given by the adjuster can be uh, challenged within 2 months rate of interest is 7% in york and trop rule 2004 but rate of interest that accrues during a calendar year Uh, in york and rock rule 2016 is based on 12 months ice libor for the currency a very important stipulation is there in respect of damage to boiler or machinery it seems uh, if the vessel gets aground and then the efforts are made to refloat her and during that if the boiler or machinery gets boiler or machinery they get bad or they get damaged then that damage or uh, that loss is accounted as general average but in case uh, a ship owner claims for the uh, damage to machinery or boiler whereas the ship never had got grounded then it is not allowed in general average if the vessel is aground and the cargo fuel or stores are thrown overboard then in the bargain if a cargo package which may be expensive it's lost overboard then the cargo that is lost overboard is also allowed as general average now let us understand the concept of deduction from uh, the expenses which are allowed in general average and uh, let us also understand the principle of new for old what does it mean new for old so it seems repairs which are allowed in general average are not subject to any deductions it means suppose you want to change a weather tight door and the change of weather tight door is allowed as general average so you will not do any deduction you will allow the entire cost that means you will replace the old door by a new door unless when the ship is more than 15 years old when the ship is more than 15 years old and you are say for example replacing a weather tight door then the deduction allowed is 1/3 so deduction will be allowed in respect of the new material that is applied the cost that i talked about the deduction of 1/3 that i talked about will be 1/3 the cost of the new material uh, that is uh, to be replaced no deductions are allowed in respect of provision stores chains and dead of dues shifting of the ship from one berth to another berth the cost of cleaning and painting the bottom will not be allowed in general average unless the ship has been painted in last 24 months in which case 50% of the cost will be allowed let us try and understand what is pooling of losses in general average i think the cost uh, expenses the calculations which are involved in general average are highly complicated but just to un- understand in a very simple way like uh, what is the sharing of losses we will try to understand with the help of this example let us say that the cost of ship prior damage was 7000 70000 units and on this ship the cargo of a was say 20000 units b was 36000 units and c was 50000 units so uh, 
before the accident the total cost was 70,000 plus 20,000 plus 36,000 plus 50,000 so that makes it Hundred and seventy six thousand units. Let us say uh, in fire, the ship as well as part of the cargo that gets damaged, say, is total cargo and B's sixteen thousand units damage. The damage to the ship. Uh, is caused in the bargain and let us say that after uh, the salvage the recovery value or residual value of ship is 20,000 units. In this particular accident let us assume that apart from the loss of the ship apart from loss of the cargo, the additional cost involved is say in respect of towage plus repairs it is 40,000 units and let us say the legal and administrative cost is say 4,000 units. Uh, then if we consider the total losses Right? Total losses about towage, repairs, the administrative cost and the loss of cargo in the ship. It would be uh, 20,000 because the entire cargo is burnt plus 16,000 plus uh, 40,000 that is towage etc. and administrative cost 4,000 and then there is loss of value of the ship the ship which cost it 70,000 units the residual value was 20,000 so 50,000 that is a loss of ship owner right because 70,000 was the original value and the residual value of the ship is only 20,000 so if we consider the total loss it is 000, 000 130,000 total value of the ship plus cargo before the damage was 176,000 units and out of 176,000 units if we consider the loss in the entire operation that is 130,000 uh, so if we want to calculate the percentage loss it will be 130,000 800 divided by 176,000 73.86 percent so overall loss of ship plus cargo which is faced by the cargo interest as well as the ship interest is 73.86%. So everybody pouring in of the losses, sharing the losses means everybody would have to face this loss. So A whose cargo is 20,000, let us see what is 73.86% of 20,000, 20,000 into 0.7386 gives me 14.77 so A whose uh, uh, entire cargo of 20,000 was lost has to contribute 14.772 units 14 but he's already lost 20,000 units so what is the difference 5,222 5,228 units will be given to A. 5,228 units to be given to A. Now B who had a cargo of 36,000 his contribution will be 26,589 26,589 is his contribution but he's already incurred a loss of 16,000 isn't it he's incurred a loss of 16,000 here it is so uh, minus 
16. That means he needs to contribute 10,589 or 10,590. B gives 10,590. In a way, A gets 5228 units and B contributes to the common kitty 10,590 units. Let's look at C. C did not incur any loss, but C is liable to contribute 50, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 0 0.7. 386 that gives me 36 930 C gives 36 930 to common kitty B gives 10,590 and C gives 36,930 to the common kitty now let us look at the ship owner ship owners Contributory value would be 70,000 multiplied by 0.7386. 7386. That gives me 51702. Uh, a ship owner's contribution is 51702. But he's incurred already so much of loss. For example, he has incurred the loss of 50,000 because that is the loss to the ship. He has spent 4,000 here and he has spent 40,000 for the repairs and toys etc. He has already incurred so much of loss. So he has already incurred 94,000 units. And he is liable to pay 51,702. Right? So let me uh, subtract this amount from 94,000. That gives me 42,298. 42,298 to be given to ship owner. So, uh, from where does he get 42,298? So, uh, you can see that uh, uh, C gives 36,930 to the common kitty. Uh, <coughs> B gives 10,590 to the common kitty. So let's see what is the total of 36930 and 10590. The amount given to the common kitty is by B and C is 47,520 units, out of which A has to be given 52. 28 units and the remaining is 42,292 which will be given to the ship owner. That means uh, if we total 36 930 and 10 590 and from that if we subtract 5228 that is the amount to be given to the ship owner and if the distribution or the sharing of uh, funds is done like this it will be considered as the uh, losses are shared by all the stakeholders to the common maritime adventure.